toggle switches. A little more fun than buttons and simpler than sliders. In this video, I wanna share how I created toggle switches for my personal project. They can be toggled by a mouse click or via code depending on the use. For this video, all the coding will be done in C-sharp and it's only about 80 lines of code. For this video, I'll also be making use of Dootween, which has both free and pro versions. The free version has all the features needed for the toggle switch. If you haven't seen or heard of Dootween and you're making a game, you should go check it out in the links below. It's a beautifully easy tool to use that will add juice and polish to any project. So to get started, let's build a basic toggle switch. The parent object is just an image and I'll adjust the size like so. I'll also add an audio source component for a nice click sound effect and load in a generic click clip. The clip that I'm using, I just found on the asset store and I'll put a link in the video description below. The parent object will also eventually host the toggle switch script, which I'll be creating a little bit later. Next, I'll add in two children text objects. These are 100% optional and my code doesn't interact with them at all. So if you don't want text, then don't put them in. The final addition is a child that will serve as the toggle indicator that will give some of the visual feedback to the player. This object needs to be carefully lined up and the anchors placed on the corners of the object, like so. You may notice that I'm cheating a little bit here and I'm using the free GUI tool script which sets the anchors with a hotkey. Check the link in the top right or in the description below to see a short video on how to use the tool. So now onto the code. I'll create a script titled toggle switch and open up Visual Studio. Before getting into the functions and variables, I need to add a few libraries. I'll add in unityengine.ui so I can interact with the UGUI components. I'll then add in unityengine.eventsystems so I can register when the player clicks on the object. And finally, I'll add dg.tweening, which will let me use the tweening functions of dotween and will save lots of time so I don't have to create individual animations for the toggle switches. I also need to add the interface eye pointer down handler, which is in the events systems library and will require an on pointer down function to be implemented. This function will get called if the player clicks on the object with this script. You can manually add the required function or by right clicking on the interface and choosing the correct option, Visual Studio will add it for you. And lazy is good if it's faster and more accurate. So I'm going to let Visual Studio do the work for me. So next onto the variables, and there's a good number of them. I'll be adding the attribute serialized field to many of the private variables so I can set their value in the inspector. The first variable I'm gonna create is a private Boolean called underscore is on, and I'm gonna set it equal to false. This is gonna be the variable that tracks whether the switch is on or off. Below that, I'm gonna create a public bool called is on, and I'm gonna create a public getter, but no setter. And what this allows us to do is read the value from other scripts, but we're not gonna be changing the value of the toggle switch from this variable. We're gonna be doing that through a function later on in the code. Next, I'm gonna create a rect transform, and this is gonna reference the toggle indicator or the part that's gonna slide back and forth. After that, I'm gonna create a private image, and this is the background image. So we can change the background image to give the player more visual indication of what's going on. With those created, I'm gonna create two colors. One is the on color and one is the off color, again, to give the player more visual indication of what's going on. Now the idea here is we're sliding this toggle indicator back and forth. In order to do that, we need to have an off position and an on position. So I'm gonna create two float variables. One's gonna be called off X and the other's gonna be called on X. And this is just because we're gonna be sliding the indicator on the X axis back and forth. We're gonna have a position when it's on, position when it's off. Next, I'm gonna create a tween time, and this is a float variable, and this is gonna be used in the do tween functions. This is how long it's gonna take us to transition from one state to another. And lastly, I've separated this out. I'm gonna add in an audio source variable because the audio source is not strictly required. If you don't want to, you don't need to add this. The last thing I want to add is a delegate and an event, so they can call an event when the value of the toggle switch is changed. This allows other scripts to subscribe to the toggle switch and be notified if the state changes. Unity has great videos on delegates and events if they're new to you. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're making a game and not using events, definitely making things harder than they need to be. So the idea here is to move the toggle indicator from one side of the parent to the other when toggled. So to do this, the script needs the on and off locations. So in the start function, we need to set those values. The off position is just the X anchored position of the toggle indicator when it starts. So this means the toggle must start in the off position. Next, the on position needs to be set. It's equal to the width of the background image minus the width of the toggle indicator. 
Describing the use of anchors, anchored position, and all the other messy bits of the UGUI system is beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I apologize if some of this sounds like nonsense. After setting those two values, I'm going to cache a reference to the audio source component for later use. Next, I need to create a function that can be called to toggle a switch. I'll make it public so that other scripts can do the toggling. If you don't want that functionality, make the function private. The function has two arguments. The first is a Boolean and is the new on-off value of the switch. I'll also add a second Boolean with a default value of true to decide whether a sound effect should be played. Inside the function, I'll first check if the incoming value is different than the current value. If it is, then I want to change the toggle switch settings and visualizations. I'll then set the isOn Boolean to the new value, and I'm also going to call a new function called toggleColor and pass in the new isOn value. This new function, as the name suggests, will change the color of the switch. I'll then call another new function called moveIndicator, which will also receive the isOn value. I'll then check if a sound effect should be played. If so, I'll play the clip from the connected audio source. The last step in this function is to invoke the value changed event. I'll do this after comparing the event to null to ensure that there's at least one subscriber to the event. If the event is invoked with no subscribers, Unity will throw an error. Next, I want to build up the toggle color and move indicator functions. In the toggle color function, I'll get the incoming value and then tween the color of the background image to the appropriate color using the doColor function, like so. In the move indicator function, I'll similarly check the incoming value and then I'll tween the toggle indicator's x anchor position to either the on or off position using the do anchor position x function, like so. If you are unfamiliar with doTween, it provides a huge number of extension functions that allow you to tween or smoothly move between two values over a set period of time. With that done, I'm going to head back to the on pointer down function. In this function, I want to call the toggle switch function, but I want to pass in the opposite value of the is on boolean so the switch goes to the opposite value. I'm not adding the second parameter as the default option is true, and in my case, I want a sound effect to be played, so it can just be ignored. The last step in the code is to add an onEnable function that will toggle the color when the script is enabled. This is a step of convenience, so the code sets the color and I don't have to do it in the scene. Now back into Unity, it's time to put all the pieces together. On the parent object, I'll add the toggle switch script, then I'll drag in a reference to the toggle indicator, set the on and off colors, drag in the background image, and finally set the tween time. With all that done, I'll give it a quick test to make sure it's working. So there you go. I've shown you how I made a toggle switch for my personal project. If you found that useful or helpful, think about hitting that subscribe or like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Patreon and Discord server in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.